Well, I just love Alaska. I visited it for the first time about 15 years ago. I totally fell in love with it, and I actually bought some land in the middle of a national park called Wrangell St. Elias. This is the little cabin that I built out of trees that we felled on the property a few years ago. That's my cabin at night. It's solar powered. I have little LED lights in it, and we have a small wood stove in it. And that's where we got all our stuff together for the expedition. We used it as a base camp. So we're flying out in two shifts to the Skolai Valley. When we started getting into DNA barcoding at GenSpace, I thought, what a great place to start a remote area in the national park and collect plant samples because most species on Earth haven't been barcoded yet especially in an area like Alaska, where you have all these amazingly hardy, but yet very ecologically fragile species due to things like global warming that you want to preserve and you want to be able to protect with legislation. You want to be able to identify them without question in the legislation, and barcoding is a very good way of doing that. Well, guys, <laughs> we're here now. We wanted to get as far away from the usual place where the plane set people down because we did, didn't want to take samples of plants that might have been contaminants that people had brought in with them. And we hiked as far as we could down the Skolai Valley and we each carried our own sleeping gear and food and then we had two tents with us. You can't carry enough food in the bear containers to go for more than I'd say about four days and you always want to have at least one extra day of food in case the plane can't get to you, which is always the fun of Alaska, because you never know what it's going to throw at you. So we're about to set out for our first full day of collecting specimens. And half the team is going to go up into more higher alpine elevations up the ridge and collect those. And the other half is going to go down to the riverbanks and collect the water plants. And then we're going to meet back here. The way that we identify plants now is the same as we did 100 years ago. You take the plant, you sandwich it between two layers of newspaper, you press it flat and dry it out, and then you show it to an expert who identifies it. We have to be really careful when we're collecting things like the grasses and the sedges because really the only way you can tell them apart is the seed head. So you have to find one that's got a seed head and dig up that whole plant. The identification is going to be through the New York Botanical Garden. Okay. And that's why we had to collect the entire plant. Once a DNA barcode is associated with this plant, no one will ever have to do that again. DNA barcoding is a new way to establish taxonomy between species. We can take a small piece of the plant, we don't even need the whole plant, and we can look at specific places in the genome and it will tell us what species that plant is. You don't have to be an expert to identify it if the plant has been barcoded in the past. All you have to do is extract DNA and compare it to a database that's been established called the Barcode of Life database. If a plant hasn't been barcoded before, then that person is down in the database as having contributed the barcode and advanced science. So it's kind of cool because it's crowdsourced science but with a very specific purpose. And here's us on the deck of the cabin, trying to get all of our samples prepared for sending them back. We probably have between 200 and 300 plant samples. It was a very successful expedition, and it's going to lay the groundwork now for future expeditions. <laughs>